Well, hello, I'm Jerry McKee, and we're, it's Monday night, 7 o'clock, and uh, it's cold outside, so you should be on the fireplace, have your Christmas tree up, kick back, and watching Primetime with Jerry McKee. See? That's that simple. We've got two special guests tonight uh, from Sanders Garden. They're going to be giving you some hints and tips on how to take care of your flowers, your garden, and if you need some landscaping, they're going to tell you how they can uh, to do that. As a matter of fact, we're going to be picking their brain tonight, and uh, they're going to be showing us some of the things that uh, that we need to do. And uh, I'm going to be taking a little of these things off here while I talk to you, like I normally do. And uh, but you really got to listen because uh, you're going to learn something where you're going to. Um, yep, here we go. There we go. And there we go. All right. Well, see there? That's simple. At 30 seconds or 15 seconds, it was like 20 minutes, didn't it? But we're going to be back. We're going to be talking to Joy and Kenny Ivy from Sanders Garden. And they're going to take you and tell you some of the things that you're doing wrong. If you look at my knockout roses, you can say, well, <laughs> they can probably see right away what went wrong. I got one of those black thumbs. So we'll be back right after these messages from Keepsake Journalists. Remember, go see them about your uh, Christmas time stuff. They got a lot of new stuff in. Go see them. We'll be back right after this message. Jewelry has the power to be this little thing that can make you feel unique. Being a true gentleman never goes out of fashion. People will stare. Make it worth their while. For the woman of your dreams and the jewelry of her dreams, rings, pins, and pendants, fabulous rubies, sparkling sapphires, brilliant diamonds, keepsake jewelers. We are the jewelers who understands what dreams are made of. Dreams of gold, dreams of emeralds, and dreams of diamonds in pins, rings, bracelets, and earrings. At Keepsake Jewelers, we have whatever it takes to make her dreams come true. Visit our new location, Keepsake Jewelers, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Suite 5, Union, 864-427-5100, 864-427-5100, Keepsake Jewelers, Union. We are back, and who are you looking at? You're looking at Joey and Kenny, Ivy. How y'all doing today? Tired. It's, it's, it's a big, it's a, it's a I've seen all those beautiful Christmas trees you have out there. And uh, I can just imagine, you know, I love Chevy Chase Christmas, where he goes out and gets that big old Christmas tree and has nothing to cut it down with. <laughs> so, but see, people, you don't have to cut down. You can just come out there and you'll load it for them. And, uh, do, do you wrap them? No, we don't wrap them. We'll cut the bottom of them so they can, so it'll be ready to go in water when you get home. We'll right. trim the low limbs, whatever you need off of it, cut the bottom so it'll have a fresh cut, so it'll be ready to uh, take on water when you get home. So and okay. then we'll load it up in the truck in the back of the SUV or on top, whatever now, you need. Now, when you... Um so you cut it to the bottom like that. Is, is it to get a lot of water? Do they need a wa lot of water well, when you they, put them in your home? or They're they going to need a good bit. But what it does is when they cut them at the tree farm, they cut them. And then all that air that they're exposed to and shipping them and everything, the sap dries on the bottom. It gets uh -huh. hard. And it won't take water until you give it a fresh cut. You give it that fresh cut. And then that just opens it up so it can take water on. And the first two days is it is when it's going to take the most water, and it'll get rehydrated, and then the water consumption will slow down. So it's, so it's, it's after it drinks all that water up like that, it goes into the I guess into the uh, yeah, what, it, needles or yeah, it goes into the needles. It just it'll just pull it all up through the the branches and just pull that water up. Oh. It, 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 it'll hydrate it and then it slows down on water but they've been cut for for a week now so uh, that's why we cut them on the bottom so when you get them home 
and you take them, put them in your stand, and give them some uh, warm water, and you off and running. Okay. Now Just don't let, don't never let it run out of water, because they right. do the same thing. If it runs out of water, that sap will start dropping again, get crusty, and then when you add water back to it, it won't go it up won't to pull it. it back up. Oh wow! And that's dangerous too because you've got lights and stuff on that's it. That's right. That's okay. right. You want to keep them hydrated. Right. Uh, now, you've been in business at Sanders Garden for how many years? Eight, 18 years? Or? Uh, a little over 17. A little over 17. And i, I got to ask this question. Now, Joy, I know you as a teacher, mm -hmm. and you were helping grow these children, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I need to grow some other stuff. And, and it wasn't Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, no. <laughs> so what, what got you thinking that, well, both of you know, what, that, you know what, I want to open up a place that uh, that I get my hands dirty, which you do, uh, and 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 grow things. So what 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 got you on that path? Well, what I wanted was a coffee shop. <laughs> when when our boys were younger and they used to race motocross, uh -huh. we one of the tracks that we used to go to. Um, we would go by early in the morning and come a, a garden center, and it ha they had a coffee shop. They had, I mean, it was massive. And so um, I don't know if they had a coffee shop or not. We used to just talk about that garden center, and Kenny was cutting grass and landscaping then, and I used to joke, and he says, men don't listen, but he listened to this one statement. I said, one day when I'm, I've retired from teaching school, and you're landscaping. We can we can have something like that, and I can have a little coffee shop. And, and coffee shop was all I ever talked about. Well, he um, ended up quitting his job to go into landscaping full time, and he came home one day and he said, "You remember when you used to say you wanted this or you wanted that garden center, or coffee shop, whatever?" He said, "I said," and I was like, "No." He said, yeah, yeah, and he started reminding me of that, that garden center that we went by, and he said, well, we, we might have an opportunity to buy this garden center. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it, and next thing I know, we had a garden center that he was going to run and do the landscaping. And we both grew too fast, and he twisted my arm, and I quit teaching school to run the garden center. Yeah. Well, I went to coffee shop. There, I went to coffee shop. I'm still holding out for the coffee shop. <laughs> well, you got Starbucks here, and of course, Ellie Bell's. I think right. Ellie, well, I, Ellie yeah. Bell's to me yeah. is better than Starbucks, but I don't drink coffee. I drink like you got uh, in your place there at hot chocolate. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, when I went, come to visit Saturday, I walked over and I said, oh, gosh, that's a little sweet right there and uh, hot chocolate. So if you get an opportunity to go by and uh, get on the Buffalo Highway, and uh, is it still called Buffalo Highway? Is it uh, Buffalo West Springs? Highway. West Springs Highway. It's uh, just right down below Aces and Walmart on the left. And uh, y'all got all y'all got some so much neat stuff in there. I mean, it's just more to me. It's it's more than just a garden shop. You know, it's it's more than that. And uh, because it, when you go back, do you, do you look back when you first started, saying? Wow, and look how much you've grown oh, yeah. since then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just over the years of what we've um, tried to do and, and experimented with. And, and I mean, I, I've always had a garden, and, mm -hmm. and we had flowers and shrubs around our house, but I've never started anything from seeds. And so we just jump in and... and well, and, and I had friends in other garden centers and, and people who were willing to share their knowledge with me, too, um, and give me pointers and give me hints on, on when to start things and how to start things and, and what to grow and what, you know, what would sell. Um, but, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, Katie, what got you into landscaping where here you're working a, a job and, uh, you know, and that's kind of like, you know, benefits and all that. People don't realize, you know, that uh, sometimes the benefits and things when you go into business yourself, you sacrifice some, but you got to use common sense and, and some things even when you go into business, too, as far as your portfolio. But what got you saying, I want to do this all the time? Well, it's, it's been a passion my whole life. Uh, ever since I was young, I've always did a lot of lawn maintenance and upkeep and 
uh, trimming the shrubs and things like that. But, um, you know, it just got to a point where, you know, I was working a full-time job and working just as much in the landscaping field. You know, it just, uh, it just happened that, you know, I, it was, I had opportunity and mm -hmm. I just took the plunge and, you know, and just went out full time on lawn maintenance and landscaping and, and, and uh, you know, one day when I was uh, in there purchasing some, some mulch from uh, Mike and Cindy is when we, uh, you know, talked about the garden center and then mm -hmm. it evolved from there. Yeah. Well, you know, my uh, trimming the shrubs, I dread it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to when the first frost comes when I don't have to mow grass, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and here's something just at your compassion you, you like doing. And oh, yeah. I love it. Um, it's not a, you know, any of that type work, you know, I, I don't dread it. I, mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I love making mm -hmm. things, the appearance and the, uh, just beautifying. Right. And, you, and you're outside a lot. Oh, I mean, outside just, continuously. Cold, um, rain. Yes. You know, now, Pete. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you have a website that people can go on and see all kind of uh, helpful t uh, tips and uh, some different things on there. Because I know you've been doing some little videos. And I started to pull one and put on here. But I don't know which one I want to pull. But, uh, but, but you give some good advice and, and talk to people. So, well, look, you, this is what you got to do. Now, one thing that uh, even myself and my wife was talking about, we got are knockout roses, okay? But you gotta do certain care to them. We, I don't think we've been doing the right care. Uh, what are some tips? I'll tell you what, we're gonna come back to that right there. We, we're gonna find out some tips about uh, how to uh, take care of these knockout roses. That's one thing that I'm just kind of curious in myself because when do you cut them back and how often do you cut them back and uh, to make them look real, uh, Fluffy and, 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 and big. So we're going to come back to that right there. We're going to go to the commercial right now. We'll be back and talk with uh, Joy and Kenny. And we'll be right back right after we hear a little bit from Keeps. Jewelry has the power to be this little thing that can make you feel unique. Being a true gentleman never goes out of fashion. People will stare. Make it worth their while. For the woman of your dreams and the jewelry of her dreams, rings, pins, and pendants, fabulous rubies, sparkling sapphires, brilliant diamonds, keepsake jewelers. We are the jewelers who understands what dreams are made of. Dreams of gold, dreams of emeralds, and dreams of diamonds in pins, rings, bracelets, and earrings. At Keepsake Jewelers, we have whatever it takes to make her dreams come true. Visit our new location, Keepsake Jewelers, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Suite 5, Union, 864-427-5100, 864-427-5100, Keepsake Jewelers, Union. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about knockout roses, and uh, that, that's something that uh, the wife and I, we, we planted uh, some on the edge, on, on the corner of our house, and uh, I did have one here on the side of the steps, but I ended up moving that because it scratch you when you go off and the porch, it wants, it always like it wants to grab you, and uh, the wife says, no more grabbing, so we had to, we moved it. Now, what can you do to to keep the, the 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 I guess the robust of it because instead of just having like one rose hanging out here and one here, uh, what what are some tips for that, Kenny? Well, first thing you want to do is when you plant one, you want to make sure it's going to get enough sun. Um, the sun is going to bring more blooms out. The sun kind of pulls the blooms out, makes it bloom more. So you don't want it to get a lot of shade. You want it to get six to eight hours of sun a day. So, mm. But after you get it planted and it starts growing, you want to trim it every year. Um, we normally trim right around January, sometime in the month of January. We'll trim a lot of knockout roses. 
And um, first thing we do is uh, we take, and uh, because of the rosette virus out there, what we do a lot of times, or all the time, is we, uh, we take bleach and clean our cutters because if you've been cutting on different materials and then you go to trim knockout roses, you want to make sure your clippers are clean. See, that's something that I bet no one that doesn't know this does because they just, we clip whatever, we put them in our buildings right. and bring them back out just like that. And I know I do. Yeah. And, and yeah, I know and most homeowners and that's do. That's very common, you know. It's, it's, but when you get into some things that are a little more particular, like knockout roses, you want to make sure that we always take a, a bleach and water mixture, about 50 50, mm -hmm. and we spray them down, clean them real good. And then we, you know, get them really good and clean. Then we take them, and we'll trim the knockout roses. And you know, some people have knockout roses that are three, four foot tall. Right. And what you want to do is trim them down to eighteen inches. You know, right below your knee. Um, okay. So I didn't know that because I, I think well maybe I'm cutting them down too much. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a back and and then one year I didn't even trim them back at all, but. But the 18 inches is a rule of thumb. <clears throat> I mean, some people go two foot. Some people just give them a light trimming. Um, I always try to go about 18 inches. That way they come back thicker and fuller. And you want to leave the uh, main branches, the, the fatter main branches, you want to clip them at 18 inches. And then you got a lot of smaller, mm -hmm. sh what we call shooters. Yeah. Just shooting out everywhere. We want to clean them back to the main main branches. Oh, okay. Main, almost like a trunk. And you may have eight, ten of main trunks coming up, uh, but you want to trim those little shooters back, and that way you're concentrating the growth to those main trunks. It's just like, I mean, when you trim, if, if that was a main trunk and you got all these coming off, you, you trim it back to that main trunk, and then the, all the growth will be up. And mm -hmm. then after it comes up, it'll start putting out and getting thicker. Now, I wonder if, uh, now we, if you buy like two or three of them, at, uh, the knockout roses, and you put them all grouped together, is that good or is that not good? Not good. Okay, see, that's one thing I did too. I said, well, you know, this is going to make it bigger and fuller like a shrub just about. When they, grow, when they start growing and they start touching, you have a lot of... Uh, they don't get enough air. They don't get enough sun where they're touching. Right. And you're going to have a lot of uh, dead branches. Wow. See, I'm, I'm learning a lot from that right there. And You want to give them, you want to give each individual plant enough room for air to circulate around it and for the sun, you know, as the sun moves around to get all sides up. Right. Well, as many sides as it can. That's one thing that we talk about at the store a lot, too, even with spacing those plants and not just putting them in the ground. It, it, that plant has to breathe just like you do. And so when they're all bunched in together, it, parts of it don't get enough air with the air circulation, and then you got all the humidity and all that stuff crammed in there, and then you have to worry about that disease and, and the fungus and, and things that grow up under that umbrella when it's crowd, cramped in there too tight. Well, I know that uh, we planted ours, we planted them out here and that right there, right at our shrubs, you know, and, and that's probably blocking off some of the light to it too, isn't it, if you're getting, because right. they kind of really, really need their own space. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. A lot of, a lot of times you'll see a, a, a rose bed out from a house, maybe they make a little island or right. a little round, and they'll space them out. and. You want to space them about six foot apart. That way it can grow, you know, it can grow three foot wide and this one can grow three foot wide and, you know, get some size to them. Now, like for instance, we already got ours that's been blooming up. I mean, they're not really full. That's like one like that. If we took and say, if we cut them back and, okay, we need to move these. Is it healthy to move them? Uh, say, what type of year is it good to move them, or, or is it even healthy to do that? I don't think it's going to hurt anything to move them, um, but you need to move them during this time of year. Uh, when they're dormant, because they, you know, they, it's not got cold, they're going dormant, 
so they're not trying to grow a lot right now so you need to move them now uh, that way when you move them they got the rest of the winter the winter rains the spring rains to root in the, because there's not going to be a, any growth on top of the right but the roots can be getting established during all this rain and cool weather because the plant's not under any stress if you move them in the spring as soon as you move them we turn off hot we turn off right. dry they're under a lot of stress and they're going to really stress out and 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 struggle so do they take a lot of water <clears throat> once they establish they do not take a whole lot of water uh, the first year is critical uh, until they get enough root system mm -hmm. But after they get a root system, uh, I've seen them just thrive. Okay. Now, do you need to put uh, fertilizer or some type of soil to help them? Uh... When you plant, it's always good because our soil around here is not the best. Right. Anywhere in the county, not just here, but I'm everywhere. Everywhere. Our soil is not the best. So it's always good to put a good plant and compost whenever you plant something. You know, whether it be a rose, a shrub, a tree. Put some good soil in there so them roots can, you know, have some nutrients and have some loose soil and they can really start tapping in and, and growing. Um, but after they're planted for a while, it's good to fertilize. It's good to fertilize and roses and most all your, uh, your evergreens and shrubbery and stuff, trees, you want to fertilize in the fall. I mean, I'm sorry, in the spring. Springtime. You want to fertilize in the spring when they're getting ready to start growing. I know our land here has got a lot of underground springs. Uh, our grass is, when everybody else is, is dying off from drought, yeah. well, I'm out here mowing mine, if I don't, it's gonna be about this tall, you know, and right. uh, it, it's just a lot of green, uh, the grass is a lot of underground springs. Yeah. I guess that's why they call it Spring Valley. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you exactly. got the creek back there, and the way this land is, it's, it's it's pretty good for moisture. And in, in that case, too, when you plant, you don't want to plant too deep. We were talking about that yesterday at Sandra's house. Yeah, there's a, you know, people sometimes when they dig their holes to plant, you know, they'll plant the plant two inches, three inches deeper than what it is in the container. But <laughs> you, when you plant a plant, you need to, you know, put that plant in there and make sure that root ball, the top of the root ball, which mm -hmm. is pretty much top of the pot, is even with the ground. You don't want it down in there and then pull a lot of dirt to it because it, the roots and all are not going to get the proper amount of moisture. Oh, the right. roots are going to be, they just like to be under the surface. And if you get them two or three inches deeper, the roots are going to start moving up towards the surface. Okay, so, I know when I plant, well, if I get this hole big enough, it, well, I can put a body in that hole, it, you know. We yeah. like to make a bowl. We like to make a well because in summer you don't get a lot of rain and you just think if I make a little well there, when it does get water, it'll hold more water. But right. that's not what you want. That's but not is what is there any, anything that you can, when you're planting something like that, that you can put in the hole there that's going to help draw even more moisture or hold the moisture. Uh, I know we put out mulch, okay? Right. And uh, th does that keep moisture going down in uh, to, to the plants or does it uh, help when it does get the moisture that, that helps just kind of hold it? It holds moisture. Okay. And it holds heat this time of year. So, if, you know, it works both ways. In, in the spring and summer, when you get a good rain, water goes through the mulch and into your soil and that mulch keeps it from drying out as fast as like your lawn does. Um, so it does help retain moisture and hold moisture. Okay. Um, pine straw, mulch, they do the same thing. And uh, both of them work good for this time of year holding heat. Um, when you plant new shrubbery, mm -hmm. it's always good to come back and mulch it uh, with, with mulch or with pine straw to help hold heat in there. Okay. Question about those two, and then we'll come back to you in a minute and ask you what is what is the number one question people ask you when they come into your place of business about uh, plants and, and certain things that uh, 
that you grow in your garden, like you got the, the greenhouse there, you got your garden, that, that Sanders, and with those, uh, with the color greens, is what that working? Big old leaves that oh, you yeah. got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what I think about color greens. I guess the only time I've seen them was when they've been cooked up, I guess, <laughs> like that. Uh, but what what is, uh, as far as uh, putting around your house, uh, mulch or pine straw, which, which is, you think is is better? Uh, I, I don't know if it's the preference of someone or, or is, does it got some pros and cons for each one? Well, the, the pros and cons are the same for both. Um, I mean, the, the, the pro, the, I mean, they're both great for retaining moisture, helping to hold moisture in, uh, helping suppress the weeds, you know, cause if you've got a good layer of pine straw or a good layer of mulch, you're not letting sunlight in and, you know, how grass and weeds, they got to have sunlight to yes. grow. So, you know, you're going to suppress some weeds uh, and they're going to hold moisture in and heat. So I don't know if there are any cons to either one, but they're both good. Um, the only things will grow like weeds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and that's one thing that we fight a lot is weeds. Yeah. And a lot of times that's because of our soil. Uh, the, the more poor your soil is as far as pH and all the different magnesiums and uh, calcium and things that's in your soil, the lower it is in pH and things, the more weeds are going to grow. Because yeah. they grow better in that than the grass and... and uh, your lawn wants a higher pH than what we normally find without adding lime. Right. I mean, that's why a lot of times, you know, first thing <clears throat> when people come in and, you know, say I'm having trouble out of this or tr trouble out of that, first thing we suggest is a soil sample. Because you okay. don't know really what you're dealing with till you find out what shape your soil is. Which causes the problem. In. Right. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we recommend people do that before they start you know, buying this or buying that, because we're just guessing, you know, if, if you need lime or if you need uh, some other kind of additive, you don't know till you do a sample. No, I know when I put the mulch and stuff out here, uh, I also need to be, but I put plastic down. Is, is that good or bad? Because, uh, you know, I, I know I put a moisture barrier underneath the house here, and I'm thinking, that's a moisture barrier but that's for moisture from coming up. Uh, it, do, you, do you suggest that using plastic down? Because a lot of times that I, we think that it helps keeps weeds out. Some does, I guess it does. But uh, it, is it? Does it really have any purpose? I know a lot of people do that. Uh, I personally do not do plastic because it. When water goes through mulch or pine needles, you know, it's going to go down and then it's got to go somewhere. Right. <laughs> so, you know, especially around the plant, you know, it, it needs to be able to get down to the roots. Um, we always, if, uh, if a customer asks or recommend or wants to do a weed barrier, we use a landscape fabric that helps control weeds but it also lets water go through and, okay. don't, and it don't pool on top or anything like that. So we always use a, a more of a landscape type weed barrier, but not, not pl I don't use plastic. But on my side, with my side of the business, cardboard works too. Oh, okay. So. Well, we'll get back and ask you just a second. We'll <laughs> go to a commercial right now and with Keith State Jewelers. And we're here with Sanders Gardens with uh, Kenny and Joey. And uh, I tell you what, I'm learning some stuff here. I know that you're going to learn some stuff because if you're just like me, just uh, pedal around your yard and stuff and wonder why things don't grow, why things don't look that great, uh, we'll find out some reasons. So we'll be right back. We're going to ask Joey some of the questions about her garden. Be right back. Jewelry has the power to be this little thing that can make you feel unique. Being a true gentleman never goes out of fashion. 
People will stare, make it worth their while. For the woman of your dreams and the jewelry of her dreams, rings, pins, and pendants, fabulous rubies, sparkling sapphires, brilliant diamonds, keepsake jewelers. We are the jewelers who understands what dreams are made of. Dreams of gold, dreams of emeralds, and dreams of diamonds in pins, rings, bracelets, and earrings. At Keepsake Jewelers, we have whatever it takes to make her dreams come true. Visit our new location, Keepsake Jewelers, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Suite 5, Union, 864-427-5100, 864-427-5100, Keepsake Jewelers, Union. All right, we're back, and uh, we were having a great discussion here about uh, not dirt, but soil. <laughs> and we was talking about dirt, too. <laughs> now, you have a unique way where I would never think about a way to using cardboard. Uh, tell us about that. How you, that does, Is that like a moisture barrier? Does it help retain it moisture? It, it does. It helps. It, it will retain moisture. It will It will um, keep back the weeds because just like Kenny was talking about with the mulch, it, it keeps the sun from hitting the soil um, mm -hmm. and, and keeping the, the weeds or grass or whatever from germinating. But it's also going to break down where on a big landscaping job or around the house, he said if a customer asks for a weed barrier, they have a weed barrier that they use, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people want to go a more organic route, and they want to use something that's going to break down. And back in, in the day, back when I remember being a little girl and my mama putting newspapers, and I've, I've done that before when we first got married back in my previous life as a school teacher. Um, put newspapers down, but they didn't last very long. They would break down and they added to the soil. Right. But cardboard will last a little bit longer and it breaks down and it feeds your soil. Your soil is a, is a living organism too, just like that plant. And hmm. so you want worms in your soil and you want those crickets and you want some of those little roly-poly bugs because those things are eaten and then doing their business, which is right. good for the good for the soil. Well, you know, I always thought, uh, where all these bugs come from? All these we got tons of worms. We, this year is the first time we ever seen. I called it the uh, exodus of the worms because we had hundreds of worms coming across our driveway. Oh wow! And I've never seen it before since we've been here twenty some years, and, and never seen it before. It's, it's like hundreds of them. And I take the water hose and squirt them all back. You know, or. So they wouldn't dry out on the driveway. Yeah, right, because <laughs> someone was drying out, the ants was carrying them off, and it's right here. And I'm thinking, wow, where's all these worms coming from? And it wasn't really during a lot of rain or nothing. It was just, they just was coming across. Well, that the, the worms uh -huh. and some of those other insects and, and that that those organisms in that soil, they're burrowing around and they're keeping that soil loose. Um, okay. Which they're is aerating. they're aerating, right? So they're not only feeding off of of other bugs or organisms that might be um, have a negative effect on your plants. They're also, you know, they're burrowing and keeping that soil loose. So um, when you so when you put the cardboard down, do you put uh, like mulch or something on top of it, mm -hmm. uh, and that way it just kind of. I, I have mm -hmm. never thought about it. never yeah. even. To me, you know, we get a lot of cardboard. Just uh, don't use waxed cardboard because it it won't. You don't want that wax. It won't break down. It keeps it from breaking down or breaking down as fast. Right. What, what about the inks in the cardboard? You know, everything's got label stuff on it. Don't I guess mm -hmm. it don't because you know we've all seen people. You know, we, around places that has cardboard land and you lift it up, there's no grass or, mm -hmm. or weeds right. on it. So that might be my weed problem. I don't have to weed eat. <laughs> <laughs> Never have to weed eat now. Yeah. And, uh, good and luck at that. Good luck at that one, right? <laughs> uh, what is one of the main questions people have for you when they come in uh, to your business there about gardening? Uh, because you have a beautiful garden. You, it looks like you just uh, you've got those magic seeds that grow the beanstalk or something. You know. Yeah. Well, um, 
it just depends on what season. Like right now, um, uh, right before we left this evening to come here, a girl came in and she said, is that your winter garden down there? And it was just about dark, but you could still see it. The moon was bright too. It was beautiful. Yes. But um, I said, yeah, that's my collards. I have a little kale, some broccoli, cabbage. Uh, it, it started out as a, a display garden, um, and it just gets a little bigger and a little bigger. <laughs> Um, but so this time of year it's, well, do I still have time to plant that? Which you don't, you know, so it, it, there's a lot of discussion of that because people, we don't have time to plan, you know, they, you see that and then you're like, oh, I need to plant that. Well, so there's just different seasons for what you're planting mm -hmm. there. Uh, yeah. what, what is some good, uh, vegetable that you plant during this time of year? You already missed it. Then missed it. You missed it. That's <laughs> what I told her. You got to plant <laughs> earlier in the fall. Yep. And then this is the time to really yeah. start harvesting. Is like between Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and, New Year and New Year's is all your collards coming oh, in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your cabbage. What What you need to do now is start planting your spring garden right. because in January, um, early February, we'll start seeding tomatoes and peppers in the greenhouse so we can start selling those in. March, okay. depending on depending on the weather, we usually start selling a few things mid March. Do you, um, do you go by the uh, almanac any? I try. Are you done us enough to? Yeah, no, um, so you know there are going to be a few of of your um, your old older farmers, uh, your older generation who plants by the almanac, plants by the moon. So we'll have just a few things ready early. So right. that they, so they're not, you know, chomping at the bits to in panic mode because they're gonna miss it. Um, but for the most part, people just go by Good Friday or Tax Day. Tax Day is the day now. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 We we used to do Tax Day regularly, mm -hmm. but we have noticed over the last two to three years that we still have a tendency to have a late frost sometime around the 20th of April so we you know we try to keep up with the weather and uh, plan accordingly because tomato plants and uh, cucumbers and mm -hmm. some of those plants are really touchy when it comes to a frost or so, not even a frost 40 degrees uh, pe peppers and cucumbers they, they, they terrible. if it's 38 <laughs> 39 you they're they're done do you do any experiment in like some crossbreeding of some of the? No, not really. Yeah. Not like crossing it myself. Right. Um, I like I like to I like for people to come in and tell me, um, you know, or or suggest seeds or plants, right. um, and then we kind of uh, you know try new things together. I think you know growing the cucumbers and put some hot peppers in there with it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get a little spice to it. Now we have. I've seen some interesting things where people had that happen in their garden and they'll bring stuff back and say, what's this? Um, but it's just where they cross-pollinated. Yeah. Now, do, do you have any classes that you uh, that you do for uh, people that want to uh, join a class or something on how to uh, farm or how you can uh, yeah. grow certain things? Yeah, so one thing that we're planning on um, doing this coming year um, is uh, a beginning gardening class mm -hmm. um, on how to seed things, well, how to plant it, first of all, because, you know, uh, one of the biggest problems we have is in April when people are starting to really plant their gardens, people want to start their peppers from seeds, and it's, it's too late. Um, but they take so long to germinate. So we're going to talk about planting your garden, seeding, um, what to seed, uh, how to, you know, what you should seed that time of year. Mm -hmm. And then the second class will be about what different soil types, raised beds, whether you put it in a raised bed or whether you put it straight into the ground. Um, and then the last class will be about harvesting and, and what to do with it after you harvest it, whether it be how to prepare it, freeze it, can it. Um, and then a friend of mine who um, uh, helps with uh, seeding my herbs, and uh -huh. she's got a greenhouse and a business of her own. So we've kind of collaborated on the herbs, 
and the weeds because we don't consider dandelions and purslane weeds. Right. Um, she's going to do some herb classes on, oh, wow. um, on culinary herbs and medicinal herbs. Wow. Well, uh, you know, I know uh, just by going into Sanders Garden, it, it's more than just plants and stuff, but you have some beautiful crafts in there. Uh, uh, right now, you got Christmas things in there. It's just beautiful. But you also, you've got... Uh, uh, three mill, uh, three horse milling company. Yes. Uh, I got to interview him on another show hey, uh, one gee. time, and they got showed how he did all these things here with the uh, uh, grits and right. difference between the grits and the uh, corn meal. And well, and, I hate to call you know, him out on this podcast, but you know we do the tailgate market. We had a tailgate <laughs> market for the first time this past year, and we're planning on doing it again next year. Um, and so I've kind of been. Uh, sweet talking him and encouraging him <laughs> to bring some of his you know I don't know that he could bring the horse or, right. or he could bring the horse but not the you know not the whole thing to to really grind any right. of the grits and stuff but I'm hoping he'll do a, an exhibit a display for me this next year yeah Mr. Sigmund showed me that uh, and here's this one thing making one side of it's making grits and the other side of it he says it all depends on the the wire and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I never knew that, yeah. but it was very interesting in, in seeing that. But you also you, you have others. You got like on your picture. I see you have bread in there sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, milk. Yeah. So where, where's the milk? I the, mean, the raw milk comes from Chester. Okay. Um, uh, a friend of mine who has uh, a produce and small grocery in Pauline. Mm -hmm. um, we pick things up for each other when we're doing produce because we don't do produce all year. I'm trying to get my produce that we sell in the store to just be seasonal and homegrown local. Right, local. Um, mm -hmm. And Paula does a little bit more than that. So we swap things and, and help each other out. But she picks the raw milk up for me when she gets hers in Chester. Um, Miss Barbara Birch has, I have some of her canned, well, I have a lot of her canned goods, uh, um, pickled, oh my gosh, there's pickled everything and jams and jellies, <laughs> chow chow, pickled relish, green tomato relish, just tons of things that she's canned at her house. Right. Um, Kim Lawson, um, who is my office manager, my, my bookkeeper. Uh -huh. My conscience. <laughs> um, she bakes bread and she sells bread. Uh, two, she tries to do it three times a week. When we were having the tailgate market, she was selling every Saturday and then a couple of times through the week. Right. So. Uh, see that that's to me is so unique. It's not just a, a garden store. I mean, it is almost like a general old timey general store. Yes, that's you know, we, That yes. you're you're getting things from people that's. Uh, making it out of their homes and putting the labels on it, you know. And because and, and, when I was looking around Saturday, and you know, I was looking over, I says, "Wow, this is so neat!" Because I was looking up at that milk. I said, I "Wonder how that tastes." Because someone's telling me about goat milk. So we had <laughs> we tried goat milk. Um, it, it didn't. People were kind of like, mm, "So we didn't do it for very long." <laughs> yeah. But the, but the but the raw milk is really good. Yeah, I talked to you later, and I'll get back right after this right here. We're going to do the last uh, commercial with Keith State Jewelers here. We'll be right back, and uh, we're talking with uh, Kenny and uh, I keep going to say Joey, but Joey, uh, <laughs> uh, Ivy from Sanders Gardens, and you're going to be uh, coming back, and we're going to find out about some of these other goodies you got in there. Jewelry has the power to be this little thing that can make you feel unique. Being a true gentleman never goes out of fashion. People will stare. Make it worth their while. For the woman of your dreams and the jewelry of her dreams, rings, pens, and pendants, fabulous rubies, sparkling sapphires, brilliant diamonds, keepsake jewelers. We are the jewelers who understands what dreams are made of. Dreams of gold, dreams of emeralds, and dreams of diamonds in pens, rings, bracelets, and earrings. At Keepsake Jewelers, we have whatever it takes to make her dreams come true. Visit our new location, Keepsake Jewelers, 441 North Duncan Bypass, Suite 5, Union, 864-427-5100, 864-427-5100, Keepsake Jewelers, Union.
Okay, we're back, and uh, I just found out something new. People, do you know it's 30 different types of tomatoes? I'm not a tomato eater, so I don't know. What is your, what, what are some of the types of tomatoes is it? So we, we start about 30 different kinds. Um, well, yeah, probably 30, 36 different kinds of tomato seeds. We start all of our vegetables that we grow, um, the plants, we start them from seeds starting about maybe the end of January, 1st of February. Um, anything from a, a mortgage lifter, uh, uh, pink brandy wines, those are heirlooms. Um, a mortgage lifter. Mortgage lifter, uh, purple, what is it, a Cherokee purple? Cherokee purples, those are all um, heirloom tomatoes that are, heirloom tomatoes are, are your sweeter, better tomatoes. They're, they're just not that big, round, pretty, Red. beautiful grocery store. Yeah, yeah, you get all kinds of colors, you get all kinds of textures, all kinds of sizes. Um, but then we do like your um, big beef, your uh, Parks Whoppers, and then the little bitty cherry tomatoes, yeah. your sun sugars. And so so, so what, what is the best tomato to put on sandwich, sandwich with Duke's mayonnaise, of course? <laughs> I'm like you. I'm not a tomato eater unless it's ketchup or tomato sauce. Right. But, um, that's me. But Parks Whopper. Probably is yeah. is that's what I sell the most of. That or better boy. Or better boy, better boy. Yeah, you, yeah. you eat tomatoes? No. no. no? Well, wow. okay. I'm not the only one. See, she no. always blamed that I was the only one that didn't do that. No, 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 no. no, no. Now, uh, when the they make a couple of different kinds of corn, even uh, one is has got like some different, got like different colors or something, in it. and it's mm -hmm. like a uh, I forgot what they call it. We call it a bicolor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's really sweet. Yeah, yeah. The, the sweet corn, um, the sweet corn you have yellow, you have white, and then you have the bicolor, which is yellow and white on the same cup. Hmm. So. Okay, well I know uh, I got some of some big old ears of it, and it was uh, it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean it was just the the it was plumpness of the kernels and things, and I did learn how to shuck uh, without uh, taking you know them little hairy strings off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You put it in the microwave and uh, <laughs> nuke it for so long, and you come out and you squeeze it out, and it just pops right out. There's no hair on it. <laughs> so I did learn that, uh, but uh, it takes—I uh, think it takes away out of the juiciness of it. Yeah. But now, you, what kind of seedlings besides tomatoes and stuff like that do you, do you usually uh, most of the time sell? Is it, it's just. So vegetable-wise, we sell tomatoes, peppers. Um, we start our own squash plants, straight neck, crook neck, um, cucumbers. We do maybe five different type varieties of cucumbers, cantaloupes, um, zucchini. Zucchini, yeah, that was the other squash. Zucchini. Um, your staples. We start those from seeds in our greenhouse ourselves. Um, and then flowers, um, oh gosh, all kinds of flowers. We we start some from seeds, but we'll get those in and plug trays. We let somebody mm -hmm. else start them for us, and then we transplant them. So pretty much everything except, well, I almost said except for shrubs, but I think we're going to grow some shrubs this year too and, okay. and do as much in-house as we can. What is a hardy flower that you can grow out in your yard that's, uh, that's you know, lasts a good good length of time and the beauty of it, you know, and, and does it come back or does it not come back, you know, peripherals, I think. Of the perennials. Perennials, yeah, yes. Yeah, perennials. So your perennials, um, oh my gosh, the lantana. Lantana um, is some, some varieties of the lantana are a true perennial where they'll die back in the, after a frost and then when mm -hmm. the ground starts to warm up, they'll come back again. But there are some hardy annuals in the in the lantana family that new gold lantana that's it, it's huge round and it's covered in yellow flowers okay that's a new gold lantana um and it will it will most of the time come back even though it's really an annual oh. um but as far as a flower dianthus is an awesome flower to plant in, like in mixed pots now and flower beds now, we use a lot of dianthus mixed in with your pansies right? because they can take the cold. 
they won't bloom all winter, but the plant will be there, and then it can also take the heat of July. Okay. I know I got these little, uh, we call them what, spider lilies. Oh, yeah. I mean, they don't last long. Yeah. They're going to last about a week, and yeah. I just keep seeing them come up. And the first time I saw them, I said, wow, what is this thing? Mm -hmm. You know. Now, Kenny, i got to ask you a question. When you're mowing grass, how do you, how low do you set your lawnmower to cut the grass? Because, you know, some people say, you set it three inches, you set it two inches, and if you set it too low, you're scalping, you know, everything. And, uh, and people think that, well, if I cut it real low, like I won't have to cut it as often. You'll probably end up cutting it twice as much because you're exposing so many weeds, and the weeds grow quicker than the grass does. Uh, we always set our mowers at around three inches high. Okay. Even, I mean, that's all the time. I mean, you want to keep the grass growing. You don't want to never take more than a third of the grass off when you cut it. Cut, cut about a third of it off, you know? Right. So, <clears throat> but you want to keep it about three inches, keep it thick. The thicker your grass is, the higher your grass is, um, it's shading out the weeds. The, the little weeds and seedlings that's in the soil right. are not getting the sunshine, not getting the air because they mm. got a canopy over them. So, and it always, it's more healthy for that grass too to have some height to it and not so low that it's kind of you know st stressing it out too much right so well, that's usually what i keep mine on is three inches and if my grass is real high i'll even up it another inch or so because of, you know of course it bogs down everything and yeah. uh, i don't want to all them clumps in the yard that i gotta try to rake up or yeah. you, you always want to make sure you, you you leave it three three and a half inches high and make sure you're cutting with sharp blades so it gets a clean cut and don't tear it don't tear the um, the blades of grass mm -hmm. you want a clean cut now when you're doing your landscaping uh if you come across someone who's got a lot of these ant hills do, do you treat those or anything or do you just... yes it's, it's good to treat them it, it helps it helps your soil because you're going to get rid of some um some pests there right uh, but you do want to treat ant hills. It's it's not a bad thing to uh, to treat them as often as you see them. Uh, there's several different chemicals you can use, uh, but you know it's it's good to treat them, get rid of them because it's they rough on your mower. They're rough. I mean, nowadays <clears throat> it used to be 20, 25 years ago you only had ants where there were an ant hill. Now it seems like they're just all over. Oh the yeah, ground. yeah, especially when it rains. Mm -hmm. You can you can just be standing there, and all of a sudden they're crawling up your leg and yep. biting you and stinging and you. And I almost mentioned that when y'all were talking about mulch earlier too, because in in the heat of the summer when you're watering those shrubs, you need to watch for them because they're going to come to that water, um, yeah, they, which could also kill that knockout rose because they're going to build up around that shrub. Build up around it. So, now, now is is the mulch treated, or can you get treated mulch, or is it? Uh, because a lot of people worry about, you know, well, I'm going to get termites or, you know. Uh, mulch, pine straw, it, none of those are going to call, none of those, what they say, have termites when you purchase it. Right. Now, um, so they're not going to really cause termites. Um, if you got termites, it's going to come to it. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to be exterminated many, many years ago, and uh, and. We treated the ground, you know, yes. uh, especially if you got crawl space. We just created that, and right. that's why I put a, a barrier underneath our house because of uh, uh, moisture and uh, mold and stuff like that. It just keeps all that down, right. and because uh, we get sometimes we get water there, and I put pipes in for it to run out. Uh, but uh, a lot of people's got that misconception yeah. that mm -hmm. oh well, I got a load of moisture and they come in and had termites, uh, you know, and, and I know uh, because of being in pest control and. That, that the mulching process mm -hmm. creates so much heat there's nothing that can live and that, in that heat that it that it goes through in the mulching process wow. that grinding and that generates a lot of heat we get mulch in and uh, for days it's just every morning there's steam coming out of it where it's so hot wow so it, nothing can live in that so yeah. You know. now, does, does the cardboard, uh, does, when you, your barrier down like uh, puts it down, does it uh, 
crawl snakes? Probably shouldn't any more than anything else. Anything else. Yeah. 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 Well, I put stuff out for that too. It's as long, long as they go and leave me alone, I don't bother them. And yeah. They, especially a black snake, you know, he, I almost stepped on one now here, and he just kind of looks at me and says, okay, you move, win. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> move on like that. Now, you also, you have a lot of events at your uh, a place there, uh, craft shows, and, and like that. tell us a little bit about that. So the tailgate market was um, ran this past year from... April to yeah. October, yeah. Um, and so we just getting started. We had we didn't have as many like event type things as part of that as we wanted to, but but it it was coming. Right. Um, we had uh, we had um, uh, three different groups to come and either play music. One was a gospel group that came three. I think they came three times. Mercy on mercy on us. mercy on us. Um, Nanette Jenkins, who is local, plays in mm -hmm. two different uh, uh, groups, and her groups came. Um, we had uh, the last tailgate market, we had um, Donald Gist with his barbecue pit. Oh, okay. Um, things like that. We had, uh, uh, at the very end, we had just, the tailgate market was over, and we had just a craft day. Right. We had a family day. Um, I was trying to remember while I was talking about the music what else we had. We back in um, September, yep. we uh, we wanted harvest. to do. Was it harvest? Harvest day, family oh, harvest family day, day, harvest day, um, and it was it it was uh, to focus more on the kids and bring the kids in oh. and and kind of get some interest in in a garden center as far as the kids. We want our kids to to know the importance of gardening. And you know when. Uh, we, we've had some kids before and, and had the person come in and teach them how to watch things grow. Yeah. And when they start seeing that growth, yeah. they get so excited mm -hmm. because they're seeing it. it it's, they've seen that it, it is a live plant. Right. Yeah. Um, and me and April Hall over at the Y, at uh -huh. the YMCA, we, we've worked a couple of times this year already, and the kids are coming back in December while they're out for Christmas break. Um, the kids that come and stay uh, doing, in the day program um, while they're out of school, they're going to come and we're going to uh, do, we're not, we can't plant anything, so we're going to talk about the birds and, and feeding oh. the birds through the winter. Okay. So always something like that to keep the, keep the, the, the young people interested because they, a lot of them don't know um, where that food comes from. It doesn't right. just magically appear at Walmart. Exactly. So, now, you, you carry all kind of uh Food, dog food, uh, horse food. Yep, any uh, kind of animal feed. feed. Uh, horse feed, yeah. uh, chicken feed, uh, any kind of small animal feed, uh, yeah. goat feed, a good selection of dog food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I used to have an African gray uh, parrot here, mm -hmm. and uh, wife started having some respiratory problems. That's from the dander of the bird. We, oh, wow. she had to go to the doctor. Went all this right here, and I says, I know what it is. Yeah. So, unfortunately, he could speak like 60 words. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, I mean, very clear, just like we're talking here. Yeah. I mean, it is amazing to me. But uh, he had to, he had to go. He had to go. So I warned him, and, and he got healthier. Yeah. And I told her, I said, I'd be glad the bird couldn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> On it. Well, it's at the top of the hour, and I appreciate both of you for coming and and enlightening, because I've learned a lot. Uh, I mean, stuff I just really didn't think. At 30 types of tomatoes, that's, that blows me away right there even. So, uh, what, you, you got another event coming up or uh, you got anything you want to um, So we closing? just had our Christmas open house uh -huh. um, and we're, we're at the peak Christmas season now. So uh, we're making fresh cut wreaths. We still have plenty of Christmas trees, lots of Christmas decorations. Um, Laurie Haney works for us now. Um, she she is creating all kinds of handmade Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. um, she reworked a, a wreath today for TC um, over at um, at TC's Jewelers. TC dropped right. off a wreath, and so um, we've got all kinds of things like well, that. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I know I've, I've, this was just on our Saturday, and you got it packed full of all kind of beautiful things yeah. for Christmas. If you want. Folks, if you want a, uh, a something for Christmas that's 
going to bring you back to the good old days, you know, and uh, remembering your grandparents and, and these things that, you know, anybody can go to the store and order one and order something off, you know, that someone's made in China. But uh, this is handcraft things that uh, people take pride in their work and and you can't beat not only made in the USA, but made in Buffalo and Union. So, you know. Right. We have handmade soap, too. I didn't get to mention that a while ago, but there's a lady that makes um, handmade out of, soap. Out of goat milk? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> and this, I said, what did the lady I met uh, this past Saturday? She was, uh, uh, she, uh, her name of her business was Something Goat and had a big picture of a goat on the front of it. And she, she talked about the soap and things, but she says, we we have eating goats where they use it for the meat mm -hmm. instead exactly. of the milk. And I mm -hmm. said, oh, yeah. she said, this is our pet. He weighs 178 pounds. I was like, a goat weighs 178 pounds? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank both of you for coming. Uh, tons of information here.